Kendall's and leading me. I'm Spiro, and I'm not a wizard. How are you doing? I have been getting sidetracked lately on another project unrelated to retro computing. I might talk about that in a future time, see how that goes. But uh, I started getting thinking about the getting back to C64 uh, and actually had an interesting conversation um, with Bacchus of Fairlight. Um, he saw my last video where I mentioned um, uh, the, the, the Vic video that he did um, and he I mentioned in it you know like if you already know the basics of assembler skip forward to the Vic part of it but he um, I not have made that very clear and it was interpreted as you know just skip forward just to the code samples at the end um, and, uh, and that wasn't my intent that was a you know just mis misspeaking on my part um, you know he put a lot of effort into it and it was a it was a it was a, a good video and uh, you know like I said in in mine I was the um, I mean it was an overview it wasn't in depth um, but it was good from the point of view that it was you know gave you the kind of the the things to focus on the building blocks the things to look at and breaking it down into how to kind of go forward with learning demo coding um, and I know I'm never going to be a great demo coder because I'm maths is my worst subject so I'm not going to be able to do some of these amazing things um, I've, I kind of wondered I thought you know I'd be better at making tools like I can that would that would have been more my thing but I missed the C64 train when I was younger because my parents bought me an Amiga so you know we're kind of I'm kind of going backwards into further back into the legacy now anyway um beside the point the last couple of days I've spent trying to learn how to do a a scroll text with interrupts um, and there's kind of two ways of doing it one is what is called a hard scroll well I'll cover two ways in this there's probably a dozen other ways but what people call a hard scroller and a smooth scroller um, code base 64 uh, uses those two terms I, I struggle with that site mainly because um, I found I found in the past that people who are really intelligent know what they're doing um, don't or aren't always able to portray that information in a way that makes sense to dummies like me um, you know they're they're kind of up here and they explain things and you know I I, I, don't, I can't always keep up and so a lot of things I don't understand on there um, but you know working through things slowly and slowly slowly I pick up the concepts here and there and, and I kind of build on that um, so the first thing I've started with is, is doing a hard scroller which is plotting text to the character uh, to the screen memory and moving those and so it looks kind of a bit more glitchy than a nice smooth scroller um, smooth scrollers are done with the uh, d016 um, what do you call that uh, memory address address I don't know to call them I don't want to call them registers because they're, they're not CPU registers I don't know what to call them I'm not a wizard I don't know these things um so the do 16 is 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 a capability in the c64 built-in where it can shift the screen I don't want to say vertically horizontally um, there's another one for, for vertical movement uh, but they 
involve a lot of things that I don't understand. Like the, you've got to only play with three of the bits and you can't change the other bits. And I haven't understood why you, you can only move I think you can only move things a byte at a time, basically like one pixel at a time up to eight. Again, I don't understand. So I started with a hard scroller, which is putting stuff onto the screen and shifting that across because I found that a little easier. Um, I think more more interesting in this is that I'm getting to grips with um, interrupts. And it is quite glitchy in this because I'm using it for some raster bars. Um, I do have some music in this. I will play this. Um, the tune I ripped from... Uh, Cascade? Who was it that did this? Purple. They did a video. Uh, they did a demo earlier this year called Purple, and this was the theme tune. I should have noted that down. Uh, just look for purple on the crime scene, I mean the Commodore scene database, uh, and you'll be able to get this. I will have this code up on my Git repository, um, but obviously because it's not my tune, I'm, if you want to reassemble this and run it, either replace that with your own tune or grab it from CSDB. Um, so I'll run this first off. I made a copy. Oh, this was... I'll run the first one. Because I made some changes to it. I, I added a logo thing, which I'll get into. Um, but this is the basic one, which just has the scroll text and the raster bars. That's really all it is, right? It's just you can see glitchy as hell raster bars. Uh, this scroller is not very smooth. Um, I do have it changing colours in and out, which is great. Um, but you can see these are. Okay, so that was what I was, that's what I had done first off. I thought I needed to add something more in there. So I added a logo and the logo is not, is, it's Petsky art because I'm not a graphician. graphician. How do you say that? Graphician? Graph is, graphician? I don't know how to say that word. Graphic artist? Um, I am trying to bribe one of my mates who used to be who used to do graphics back in the early nineties on C sixty four to get back into the scene. I'll see how that turns out. Um, so anyway, I made a little Petsky logo that the name I don't know if that'll settle on anything, but. I thought it would be funny if I made a group name named after my cats. My cats are called Harley and Quinn, named after Harley Quinn, the DC character. And so I just put the name Harlequin. And I'll make that bigger. So everything else is the same. Everything else is the same, so basically it was an interesting challenge to get that on the screen because trying to put it in one routine because the addresses went over 256 and I make a note down here for over 256 on the screen. I haven't figured out how to address 
Christmas scroll text. Still got stuff to work on. Um, this logo is basically just you know, two different Pixie characters um, and then changing the colour and resetting it. Shifting the colour. So let's go over what I did. Before I get to that, actually, the funny thing I. Again, I don't write scripts, I'm going to go off. I'd been working on that. Yesterday, I was at the point where you saw that first um, the first program without the logo. And I had started reading uh, Linus. There's two Linuses, Lin oh, three Linus, Linuses if you count the Linux one. Um, Linus Puterman from Fairlight, he years and years ago um, wrote a how to code demos on the C64 document and at the time I tried to read it, I, it most of it didn't make sense to me um, but as I've learned a few things some of it more of it has started to make sense to me uh, you know again there's still specifics I need to learn and it is a sort of a, a guiding document not a not a step by step you know do this to put that on the screen and do that uh, it's pretty good though and ironically I woke up this morning and Bacchus of Fairlight had uploaded a video to the Fairlight TV YouTube channel which I'll leave I'm sure you're already subscribed to them if you subscribe to me I'll leave a com I'll leave a link down in the comment box anyway um he had just uploaded a video which he had recorded late last year from talk, after talking to me <clears throat> about and it was a more in depth in Vic programming and it is awesome uh, it, some of it is still over my head but I think that it's the sort of thing that uh, it has, and you, you know, me and you if you're wanting to learn this stuff is you can go back to and say okay well I'm ready to look at this stuff um, and he covers, you know, everything of doing sprites, doing. Um, he did, did he do, raster bars? I can't remember now. I'm losing. But but you know, there's a lot of parts to it, and it's the sort of things that if you, you can sit through the whole thing and kind of soak it in, uh, but then go back to certain parts of it and go, ah, that's actually what I want to, you know, I'm focusing on this now, you know, rewatch bits. And it was just super cool. It was so nice of him um, to 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 make that. Uh, it's yeah. I mean, he's he, you know, it's it's he explains things well, keeping the scene alive, keeping people interested in the stuff, um, which is the exact same goals that I have here with this channel, right? Uh, except I'm coming at it from a noob level and showing you how crap I can be and still make things work. Um, so yeah I just thought that was really nice and so after that I've um, I mean I've got my list of things I need to to work on for this added that little point of interest with the logo in the middle um, I don't have any graphics or anything with anything I can use so hopefully my friend um, I won't tell you his name yet <coughs> Um, if 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 the bug bites him, then hopefully I can get him to do some graphics. Uh, you know, and this is just it's it's cool. But the things I've got to work on are the 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 stable rasters, which is something that that Beck has talked about. Um, it's something that I need to learn how to do properly. He did talk about the bad lines, which I knew about. But didn't know how frequent they were until watching his video. And it's possible that some of these are glitching because they're hitting bad lines. So uh, I'm going to have to... Um, he put a whole lot of links in his video. 
to, to, to documents to look at of um, how things work and how they're laid out in the Vic. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it's a cool journey. It's it's I'll go through this code here just to show you what I've done so far. Um, the SID loading stuff is the only. I mean I understand that. Oh, that's the other thing is that there's a lot of tutorials out there which show you what to do, but not how to do things. And so I won't I won't copy code. I won't use code unless I understand what it's doing. And and so that's why I I haven't made a smooth scroller because there are sample code out there, but I don't understand how they work yet. And I feel like I've got to understand it because if there's a problem, I, I you know I won't know where to look if I don't understand what it's actually doing. So you know it's a slower journey for me, but that's fine. It's a um, the only thing I haven't really looked into properly is loading music because Kick Assembler makes it so easy. I literally just copied some lines from the Kick Assembler manual, which was you set up a, a, a var called music, you call one of their functions called load SID, you put the name of your file, and then right down the end, you put in this thing here, which is basically, a, this is the music location, and it pulls it out of the file, the SID file you've loaded. So it, the you don't need to mess around with knowing where where the init and the play routines are it, it, it's got this output here so you can print it when it's assembling but you don't need to know that um, it basically sets the the music at the location it should be and this fill command here basically says i oh, fill memory up to the music size so that'll be the length of the file uh, and this i is an iterator built into kick assembler so music dot get data this is a function um and it basically goes through this what do you call them in object oriented programming is that like a class and this is a method calls this method and it just cycles through it just iterates through all the data fills memory with it and it pads it out and just to confirm it, um, these assembler functions print this out to your console when you're assembling so it'll tell you all this info um, and they're not in the program that gets generated it's literally just on the command line when you're assembling it into a PRG file so I didn't have to know anything there because that was just super easy um, in the old days you would have gone star equals say dollar thousand loaded the file binary in depending on your assembler how you load it in or load it into memory and then write that out i can only think of it in terms of of a of a monitor you'd load memory you'd load data into a memory address and when you assemble your program and save it to disk you would include the memory location that your code is in and the the location that the music is in so you'd probably want them consecutive back to back so that you don't have a waste of space making your making your binary larger but anyway so and then the play routine is three four bytes later uh, but you know you just don't need to think about that anymore so okay um loads music great uh, i did have because of the fact that i loaded the logo i ended up having to shift around uh, the original one over here i just did a basic upstart to pointing to and it and it generates it uh, uh, 0801 which is basic memory a few bytes at the beginning and then Normally this would start at like what 0810 or 0812 or something like that. And then your code would be, but the music that I loaded loaded itself into 
see something or other. So it ended up that when I added my code for the logo, which was originally this long winded stuff, but even adding this stuff, it turned out that my code went in over the music. And when you assemble it, it tells you, it says, oh, warning, you know, there's a, there's a, the code overlaps th this music location that you've set. So I had to shift things around. And so what I did was I put my code at 1CE0, which is after the music. Um, which is why those print statements at the bottom were really helpful for me shifting my code around. Um, you know, I didn't really need them so much for loading the music, but they helped with, uh, now I've got to move things, where can I put them? Um, and as you can see, it goes into 1000 hex, so... And I couldn't use that buffer to switch my code into. So I put my code after the music. Uh, we've still got to have that 0801 for the basic upstart. So you can, so that you, you know, when you load it on the C64, you type run from basic and it runs your assembly code instead of having to do a sys command. So I wanted to keep that. Um, so yeah, oh then there's the music start music in it, which is another part of the, and then there's a music.play call that you make in your interrupts. Um, so what have I done? I have set up some variables. Um, this is used by my scroll text, so I probably should have renamed that. But I've got 0400, which is Commodore screen memory, uh, plus 40 times 23. So I'm putting it on line 23. Each line has 40 characters. So this puts it 23 lines down. And that's where my starting memory is for my scroll text. Um, yeah. So we, we load the music. We initialize it. We clear the screen. And I'm using kernel routines which if I was to make a proper demo I would probably be banking out um, certain things like um, the kernel that's why you see in a lot of a lot of demo code you'll see that they'll fill the screen with spaces and you know like four lines of 0400 comma x, 0500 comma x, 0600 comma x and so on uh, and they're filling the screen like that because they've probably banked out or expect to bank out the the basic and kernel ROMs so they do it that way but because I've still got the kernel I'm using kernel routines um, display my logo so and then I change the text color, actually this is the text colors for the scroll text changes the white in the middle with the darker colors on the outside uh, I then set an IRQ for uh, hex 30 so that's the raster line so, I've so this is a macro which is a feature of kick assembler so I can say I've got this macro name and I can pass it some parameters so I've passed it the the um, the the raster line that I want the interrupt to trigger on, and then the uh, interrupt vector routine. So you'll see that if I highlight that, it highlights this as well. So this is the this is the interrupt vector routine that runs when the raster gets to line hex 30. Um, then I enable the raster up, 
raster interrupt signal so you're basically enabling the system to say okay now I'll start accepting your raster interrupt triggers and call the routines or the vectors that you've asked for um, and then it does an endless loop so the rest of it is done on interrupts <coughs> so let's just go through the display logo part first where are we if I highlight that you can see we're in VS Code I need to jump to so again I've used another macro and that was I, I split everything up onto a line at a time so that I didn't have that um, 256 character limit of you know where where I'm placing stuff if there's more than 256 bytes away then you get problems so I just thought I'll just do it one line at a time just bang 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 um, I've got the character that I'm going to fill the 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 data label that I'm referring to where I'm going to put it so you can see the first ones were screen base and then once I hit that 256 byte limit I start I switch to screen base plus 200 and this is the iteration count so if I go up to this code where is that no that's not what I wanted to highlight I wanted to highlight paint logo so that macro this is here right so the character the data that it refers to the base memory it's going to put the character at and the counter how many times it's going to loop around and so down here logo line one there's two bytes logo line two so you can see it's got an offset of oops of 40 so that's second line down third line down offset of 80 next line down offset of 120 160 200 um, and did I miss a line? Six screen base. I'm still plus 200. Oh, because I managed to 234, so that's still within the limit. Um, but then when I changed the character, I thought, okay, well, I'll make the base offset of 200 so this is this should actually be 200 plus 3 but then we get down to here too that would be 240 plus 3 and then we get to 240 plus 16 so after this point these would all get displayed at the beginning of memory because it would just kind of wrap would lose so I'm not explaining that very well I don't think but so that's what I did to get around that problem and that breaking it down using that macro uh, I did a similar color for the colors for the putting the data into color memory that was a bit easier because you saw every two rows was a different color so it was basically uh, that's why I do a comparison with 80 because I go down 80, 80 characters which is two lines and then it goes okay we stop uh, and that is called a display logo so I do the I call the display logo subroutine do the characters and then all the stuff which I don't use anymore and then I do the colors so you can see I do white and then color base plus 80. I change the yellow, then orange, brown, dark gray. Then we return. So this was just to show you, I left this in here because this is how I figured out. This was what I initially did. I was like, okay, I want to play stuff here. I want to play stuff here. I think this is called unrolled code, right? This is super inefficient. Um, takes up a lot more memory. But I guess in good code, that's doing something a little bit 
better than this. It can run a little bit faster if you, rather than doing math calculations. Anyway, so I tried to change it to a loop, and I had 58 characters, so I tried to do the whole lot in one loop. And that was when I found, okay, I've hit a limit of 2 to 6 bytes. Stuff is wrapping up to the top of the screen. So I switched into doing these macros. Um, so that's how that works. Trace our text colors. That's a little subroutine that uh, sets the colors. Again, this could be done more efficiently, but I thought it was just a bit easier at the time. Um, so it gets white and it fills the line with white first, and then it gets light grey uh, what have I, done? I did it the other way around so the blue is at the at the outside edges so the character 0 and character hex 27 which is 39 in decimal so the very first and the very last characters are blue um, the characters in from that uh, at positions 1 and hex 26 which is 1 and 38 are light blue and then I do two characters on each side which are light grey which leaves the rest of it to be white in the middle um, and, and you know you leave that right you set the, your colours and colour memory and that stays put until you change them or corrupt memory and it breaks so that's the text colors and then the scroll text gets done by interrupts so i've got the set irq which i think is down here the macro so it says it gets past the raster line and the vector so this is pretty standard um interrupt routines and what it does is it clears the high bit of the raster line and clears clears memory so that it's ready for the next interrupt location trigger thing. Um, we load raster line so that is the raster line that it actually triggers on so you're saying you know when when the beam on the old monitors raced across the screen it would do one line at a time and you want to say okay well on when it reaches this line i want to trigger this vector and so the vector gets called by and I the vector I've called in this case the the vectors you write them out as if you were to write a a subroutine but instead of an RTS at the end you you jump to um, a kernel routine that uh, what what is the description of that it initializes the I went and printed out this wonderful thing here on Bacchus's advice I can find the real book and it's got all the there we go so the main IRQ entry point a lot of people use EA31 and when I started looking into this I was seeing everyone doing EA81 so EA81 stuck with me and I looked into it um, EA81 is the IRQ entry point with no keyboard scan. If you use EA31, um, it does include a keyboard scan. But from what I gather, if you use EA31, you can only call that once per frame. Someone said it, you can call it once per frame. I don't know what a frame was in that context. I presume it's 
one whole drawing of the screen. And because I'm doing multiple IRQs on one, what I think is a frame, I'm just using EA81 and I'm not doing any keyboard work in this anyway, so it, it doesn't matter too much. So this takes the place of an RTS if you were doing a subroutine. So uh, first thing we've got to do is uh, acknowledge the raster interrupt by writing to DO19. Now I've seen people do all sorts of stuff with this. I've seen them do ASLs. I've seen them do increase. I've seen them write to specific bits. Uh, but from what I understand, any writing to it triggers it, acknowledges it, doesn't... Yeah, I, I don't think that this... I think you're supposed to put a 1 into bit 0. That's all you need to do. Uh, but I think that there's some magic going on in the background, so I've seen people do all sorts of stuff here. Um, I jump to the music play routine here. I've got a bit of a delay, just so the, that the text doesn't scroll too fast. Um, what have I got? Store column pointer. So... We're getting the, what was I doing with the column pointer? I think I'm storing that down the bottom here. VA column pointer, LDY, increase. All right, so I'm increasing where I'm, because I'm, uh, I'm, so I get the, I get a, a pointer to where the text is. Or text pointer. Text pointer is again another uh, another bit of data down the bottom here. Um, just because we don't have enough um, registers to work with all this information, right? So I've got the we lo we load the characters. We're storing it at twenty eight, which is basically the last character on the screen. Um, we are, are we decrementing or are we incrementing? We're incrementing column pointers. So basically we'll go, uh, this, this loops through from character 0 through to character 39 on the line each iteration. And it's, uh, and this is what this column pointer is referring to. So what it does is it says, okay, well, the character at screen location plus one with this offset, which is the column pointer offset. Screen so first time it runs, it'll be that'll be zero. So it'll say character at location one, store it to location zero. And then increment the pointer. Compare it to dollar um, hex twenty eight, which is to say, have you reached the end of the line? If not, BCC if the carry is clear, which means less than or equal to, or is it just less than? Less than or equal to, um, then branch back to uh, the the exclamation minus means one exclamation so you can see i've got exclamation plus plus which means jumps forward two of them this is another trick of kick assembler um so basically we'll go through and it'll say okay well next time around move character two into character one uh, into location one move the character at location three into location two and so on and so it's shifting each character across um It loops through and it basically it will do all of this. It will put one character to the end of the screen and then it will scroll the whole line across. And then it will put another, you know, when it repeats next time it will put another character at the end and it will scroll the whole thing across. 
so that's the that's the scroll text interrupt but what i also wanted was i wanted to have raster bars um so in the first interrupt you trigger a second interrupt so at line hex e0 it's going to trigger this vector bottom raster bar a which is the line the raster bar above the scroll text that i've got and then it does this, it basically increases, uh, it increases DO19, which is again, accept the interrupt. Um, change the colour to white. Change the background and the foreground, because it's in the middle of the screen. Um, LDA D12, which is the location that the current raster bar is at. I tried to do this to try and figure out stable rasters so this actually waits a couple of lines after the initial triggering raster so it waits and that's partly why the line is a little bit thicker but you know it starts in weird locations um so it'll 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 wait a couple of lines and then it'll set the color back to zero. And then it'll trigger another IRQ, right? Which is a few lines down on the raster and it's bottom raster bar B. Which again, so this, end, this ends up being, you know, a couple of raster lines under the scroll text. So it does the same kind of thing, right? And then before it quits, it sets up the IRQ again at the top for the scroll text. So so the process is, the program starts, it triggers a raster interrupt for the scroll text, the scroll text interrupt triggers an interrupt for the first raster bar, the first raster bar triggers an interrupt for the second raster bar, the second raster bar goes back to the top basically and triggers the interrupt for the scroll text again. And they just keep repeating. So one interrupt triggers, does its work, triggers the next interrupt, it does its work, triggers the next interrupt. And you can keep these going on. Um, so that is the gist of working through those with the interrupts. That was the most important thing to me other than doing a, a, a nice scroll text was getting to grips with how the how the interrupts worked having having lots of things on the screen um, having um, lots of stuff going on that it's processing it's processing music it's processing scroll text it's processing raster bars um, and processing glitches which is an unintention, unintentional side effect so I've now got to figure out, okay, where, where are the glitches happening? Why are they happening? Are they happening because I'm triggering these on bad lines? Uh, I, I, I know of, and I haven't seen any code to do. So, so Beck has talked about stable interrupts, but I have not really looked into them properly. Um, a lot of it comes down to getting timing correct. Uh, and his video was the first time I saw it where he talked with someone where I saw the reference to um, the idea that a raster line, the drawing of that one raster line itself is a certain number of, of cycles. Um, and he was I think it was, I think it was 63 cycles. Bad lines, happen once every uh, they happen at the at the top of every character if you imagine on the on the screen you're 40 characters by 25 every one at the top the first pixel line of every one of those 25 lines of text triggers a bad line because this because the c64 has to do a lot of other stuff on each of those lines so it reduces the number of um, of cycles 
drastically that you have to work with. Um, that's my, that's all my understanding is at the moment. So I don't know. And so because this is one per line, it basically means that every eight pixels, the first of every eight pixels, um, so in every byte, one byte, in every byte, one one line, one bit. Is that how we're thinking about it? One bit in every byte is a bad line. First line of every character line on the screen is a bad line. So it's possible that this conflicts with that. I'm going to have to look into that. Um, or that some of these trigger on bad lines. And maybe that's making it worse than it should be. Uh, yeah, so that's the next thing I've got to look at is stable interrupts. And then after that, maybe I'll figure out D016 and try and get a handle on smooth scrolling. Um, but yeah, that's it so far. I might, I'll might i take this stuff out before I put it onto GitHub. Um, but yeah, so... There's the scroll text. I'm fig yeah. So the Nick and and the other thing I've got to figure out is what happens when I get to. I think I think the this is two fifty six or two fifty five bytes, and so I end up losing all of this. Uh, I did pay attention to capital little letters. I switched it into lowercase screen mode. Character set. Um, so yeah, that is, I might do a, a, a quick assemble of this, just so that you can see, where are we, kick ass my scroll, so this will show you what I was talking about with these locations overlapping, so we can see here when it, those print statements here, a sensor, that was who made it, uh, so the tune is purple by sensor design. Author Magna Harestad. Harestad. I'm butchering, sorry. Um, but this tells you what type of SID it is, the header version. Uh, where is it? Scroll up. It is the, the init with the play routine, the number of songs, and all that stuff. So uh, SIDs can have multiple songs inside the file. Again, I don't know about that stuff. But this helped me... Because the that location was automatic and read out of the SID, um, my code ended up overwriting. It went, started at 0801 and went into... You know, overwrote into this... Um, memory location so I had to shift my code to be after it um, so you know this is kind of a nice useful information to get out of um, this is default output from kick assembler so yeah that was pretty helpful um, I think I've been rabbiting on long enough uh, I hope that was useful. I hope it was inspiring more than anything because I, you know, this to me is I'm not a great coder, but I want people to look at the stuff and go um, that even a rubbish coder like me can do shit. So you can too. Um, you know, to learn from this, to, to try and figure out more things about how the 64 works and get involved, get into it, get into, you know, writing your own demos or intros or any kind of code, you know, just screw around, just, you know, we're not, we're not in this to, for the, um, for the internet points or for the, uh, for the monies, it's just fun, so, uh, yeah, if you, if you, 
make something out of this or if you learn something from this and probably you're going to learn more from someone like Bacchus um, show me what you've done I, you know I'd be interested to know um, it's it's a it'd be nice to also join in with some people who are learning this stuff as well um, you know rather than kind of bothering all these guys who know their shit already um, anyway I'm going to leave that that's probably been it's almost an hour there we go so thanks for watching uh, I hope you enjoyed it let me know your thoughts down below and we'll talk to you next time